Hey guys, Happy New Year. It is January 1st, 2022, and I thought that would be a great opportunity to revisit a video I've done a few times, and to this day, the first video I did called True Cost of ICF is one of my more popular videos, and people are still watching it nine months later, um, but the numbers aren't real up to date on ICF or lumber. So I wanted to get into just kind of redoing that little video today. I'll link it here because there, it, I'm in my shop and I've actually got full size mock-ups instead of little toys and little small pieces of OSB to show you. So it's worth watching. Just know that the numbers aren't, you know, current. So we'll give you some current figures today and just kind of see where, where the market has landed. It has been a crazy year in markets in general. Um, especially in construction, you know, the, uh, inflation has hit everything. It's been up, it's been down, it's been unavailable. So, um, we're going to get into it today and just kind of redo our little comparison. It's, it's not overly detailed, but it's a really good snapshot of the current market and where you are lumber versus ICF and all the benefits that come with ICF. Okay guys. So if you remember from all the other cost videos that I've done, what I do to give us a snapshot is I take six blocks and that's, you know, four foot by eight foot wall. And then I take the same thing in quality framing. I'm not using OSB or that foam board, whatever. Zip board, zip tape, two by six framing and spray foam. That's the closest you're going to get to um, the efficiency, you're not going to get there to, to competing with ICF, but you can get close if you do that. So what we do is we break down those two walls. If you remember the picture from you know before, I had it all set up in the shop. Um, at the time, in March, I think the video went live March 22nd of 2021, they were within $5 of one another at around $200. I think one was 197 and the other one was 202. Um, ICF was a little bit more. And then as I did these updates every couple of months, lumber, ICF was completely stable most of last year. It went up a couple times um, second half of the year, but um, there were very nominal changes. Concrete was very stable and lumber actually kept going up. The, um, at one point, zip board got to up to $71 a sheet. In that video in March, it was 55. Um, and two by sixes, every, everything went crazy. Then the commodities started coming down, so the dimensional lumber dropped. OSB stayed high for a while. Um, and honestly, it's still kind of high, but it's way better. So we've kind of hit a point where everything's too expensive, but it's sort of stabilized at the moment. So to get into the lumber, I went to Home Depot today just to check the current prices. And sorry, I got all this black stuff on my arms. I've been spraying lacquer all weekend. But zip board, a sheet of zip board is now down to $37.55. That sounds good when we're comparing it to $55, $71. But 18 months ago, I was paying 17 bucks a sheet for this. So it's still pretty annoying. But 37.55 is much better. It actually brings lumber into the realm of a consideration. Zip tape, which I'll show you a picture of right here, um, $27 basically um, a roll. And in a four by eight piece of wall, you got to factor about $5 of that tape. Um, you'll get about five to six sheets of coverage with one roll, depending on how many windows you have to tape up. Um, two by sixes, we do five eight foot two by sixes to give us that wall. And they were, they were today, they were $12 and 32 cents, which is still pretty historically high, but it's better than it was. Um, and that, that's about $63. Um, the kicker is, so lumber's way down from where it was. It's still kind of high, but insulation, spray foam insulation, resin based product has over doubled in the last year. So from that March video to now, it is gone from like forty dollars for to fill it up to it's now two dollars and eighty five cents a square foot in Springfield. So thirty two square feet at that is ninety one dollars to insulate that wall. So that brings us to ninety or sorry one hundred and ninety seven dollars, almost exactly what it was last March when lumber was crazy because of insulation. Um, 
We'll get into why I'm going to leave rebar out of this in a minute because depending on the municipality you live in, that may not be the whole story. In Springfield, Missouri, um, the strapping requirements for a wall like this or the rafters, I mean, I'm going to have a little cheap hurricane clips that are required and basically nothing else. Um, in Dolphin Island, Alabama, where we've built uh, three different houses over the years, you can see the links to two of them right here. Um, the same house will have strapping at every stud to the floor. If it's more than one floor, every floor to the next floor, every single stud to the corresponding rafter that's on 16 inch centers. So my point is, depending on where you live, strapping in a house in Missouri might be $500 for the entire house. Strapping in Dolphin Island, Alabama in a hurricane zone is about $7,000. So I can't tell you what your cost truly is. I'm trying to get you apples to apples, so I'm leaving that out. And with, when I get to the ICF, I'm going to leave rebar out. Because on a 2,000 square foot house, like we're talking about, like I said, you could have thousands of dollars clear down to just a few hundred dollars in, in strapping. You'll always have the same amount of rebar, basically. It'd be about $2,000 on a house like that. It's a pretty stable cost. And if I throw that in because I know it's going to be the same, then I'm going to have to guess on this. So I'm leaving that out. Uh, I got hammered on my video back in March because everybody thought I forgot it. And I left it out on purpose and forgot to tell you why. Okay, so back in March, <clears throat> the ICF was $3.87 a square foot for Fox Blocks uh, where, where I live. And that correlated to a 4 by 8 piece of wall costing $124.00 at that time and the concrete I was getting for around 115 a yard for an R3000 um, that was delivered so that was about $68 which was bringing us to right at 200 or 195 something like that per 4x8 sheet so it was about five or six dollars more than the than the than the framed wall <clears throat> but um, ICF it took a couple increases different you know, like Build Block and Nudura, they all went up like 15% back in like April, May. And Fox Blocks held on until late summer. They started ticking the price up. Just took a pretty good increase uh, in the new year. And I, my price lock went away. So my price now is, um, let's see, it's $5.25. That's delivered to me. Um, we do have a plant locally that's close, <clears throat> but... They're so far behind on production, we're having to take deliveries directly from their Fox Blocks' home office in Omaha. So we're having some freight costs. So I'm factoring that in. You could probably get it for under five if I didn't have to pay freight. But most of you guys are going to have to pay freight too. That's one of the, the, the devils of ICF is if you're not very close to a plant, the freight can get kind of high. But today, we're going to go 525 per square foot because I was quoted that by, by my guys over at Roast. And uh, 32 square feet will run us about $168. So we're up, you know, a little over $40. Um, the concrete that I'm, I'm, we're actually using an R3500 now for most of our mix. It pumps really well. It's just purely, you know, workability. We really do a ton on our swimming pools. If you guys ever watch those videos, um, just really manipulating our mixes. So um, we're up about $11 on the amount of concrete to fill this in. Bringing us to $246 all in to get this done. Now, I mean, that's, that's actually probably kind of on where it should be. You know, um, that means the framed wall to this is about 20% different right now. Um, now, keep in mind, that doesn't mean your house costs 20% more. That means your outside wall costs 20% more. Now, Everything else on your, your roof, your, 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 your microwave, your kitchen cabinets, your floor is all the same. So it really is going to make your house maybe cost 5% more, maybe, um, in, the, in the overall um, aspect. So I think that it's, very, it's still very easy to justify ICF given that you're gaining almost complete storm resistance, um, the thermal mass, the energy savings. Um, if you guys remember from that video in March, I actually broke it down and I'll do it again right now. So if we go with, I'm going to go with a $250,000 house. I did a $200,000 house in 
um, in, in March, but housing has gone up so much. We'll just go with a $250,000 house and we'll make a 5% difference to go to ICF. And um, I'll show you that the payment is only going to go up by a little bit and your utility savings is going to come down by more. So your monthly nut on an ICF house is typically going to be less than a, than a stick frame house of the same quality. And keep in mind what I'm saying. Normally, it'll take you about three years to save what you spend extra on ICF. But if you actually are ha you have a mortgage and you know you there's things you can never pay off taxes utilities those things you're paying until the day you die if you can minimize one of those things utilities and lower it by more than your payments going up you're actually saving day one i mean your monthly outgoing the amount of money you write on checks to pay these bills is less with icf even though it's more to construct because it's less to operate but anyway i'll break that down for you guys right now Okay guys, so um, we're gonna say that the stick frame house is $250,000. It's kind of a mid-level starter home, nice, a nice home. Um, $250,000, I went with 3.9%. Interest rates are going up. Again, these, these videos may only be good for a few months at a time. That's why I try to update them regularly. 3.9%, 30 years. Um, it's figuring PMI, not PMI. So it's a uh, $1,462.50, assuming you don't have PMI insurance. So $1,462.50. Now, I will switch this around and do, um, we're going to add 5% for, uh, for ICF and see what it does to the payment and calculate the difference. And then I'll get into what the utilities are going to do for you. Okay, so I added 5% to the, uh, the number, so it made it $262.50 to do the same house in... ICF theoretically. Same interest rate. The payment went to $1,521 a month, uh, an increase of $59. So your payment to have ICF is $59 more per month on this theoretical house. The utilities, <clears throat> and one thing about that I didn't mention is um, the utilities will be quite a bit lower for a couple reasons. One, an ICF house can generally, if you have a qualified contractor that knows how to do like manual J calculations, everything else, that, that house will probably take a four ton unit when it's stick framed and get away with a two and a half ton unit with ICF. So you're gonna save money on the unit to purchase it. Then it's obviously gonna run for, I mean a smaller unit doesn't cost as much to run. You're going to say, my, uh, my HVAC guy did some calculations for me back in March of last year, so you can see in that video um, what he did. The utilities alone were $70 a month cheaper with ICF. So now you've gone, your payment's $59 more, but your utility bill is $70 less, and it'll be $70 less forever. You'll pay your house off eventually. So now you're gonna be saving $70 a month. Um, you know, so that's, that's kind of a killer aspect of ICF is just the lifetime investment that you're getting. I mean, you, a tornado comes through in Missouri where we are, um, you know, assuming you don't have any windows right over your head, you don't, really, you don't have to run for the basement. You're in the basement above ground effectively. The only reason I think that ICF isn't basically just the standard in construction, you can't really go to Home Depot and pick it up on the shelf. It's not as easy to come by and there's still resistance with a lot of builders. I've addressed a ton of the myths or the concerns about ICF, whether it be moisture, rising damp, uh, termites. I got a video about that you know, aspect. And ICF scares builders that have never played with it. Most of the time that's not the case. You guys really have given me tons and tons of motivation to push this thing as far as we can, to really try to make this as mainstream as possible. That's why, I mean, we're doing mostly swimming pools right now. I'll be totally honest with you guys, it's not a lot of fun to build houses in 2021 hopefully 2022 gets better when windows take four months to arrive um the shingles maybe your color is available maybe it's not appliances or it is a nightmare um and it's a lot of things you can't do anything about and on top of that you can't find help with pools at least we're only looking for you know five suppliers instead of 50. um it's still a battle but it's a better battle for us but anyway um a couple things i wanted to get into um, at the end here is we're getting ready to launch our new website. Um, this is kind of the working model of it. Um, we're going to have training for the ICF pools. Everybody's been asking for it. 
So we're gonna we're gonna give it a try. We're gonna probably have our first seminar in uh, late March. We'll announce those dates before we we have a home show coming up at the end of this month, and we'll announce those dates. I'll also get this thing live, and I'll do a whole video about the launch of the website and the training and what's gonna be included, how it's gonna work. So anyway, just kind of wanted to update where we are right now with ICF pricing, you know, and I'm gonna do a lot more videos about the structural, you know. Um, superiority of ICF this spring as we get into tornado season and everything else. I mean, I never really get into that aspect, which is really people's biggest motivation to go ICF a lot of times. That said, um, we'll be getting back to you in the next week or two with, uh, like I said, the website and the training coming up. But uh, I'll try to do this once a quarter, assuming things are still in flux. Hopefully, we don't see many more increases on ICF this year. I, maybe we even get stable and resin becomes more available and everything kind of goes back to normal. Lumber, I have no idea. It doesn't really make any sense why it's still as high as it is. Um, but, you know, we'll see what happens. Happy New Year, everybody, and I will see you guys next time.